Hello world! Welcome to the fifth video in my Plotly and Dash playlist where I'll be creating a uh, chart with two y axes but using Plotly. So I've done this before as you can see here this is using matplotlib and I'm not a huge fan of it but what we did do was um, we can automatically download the SMP500 which is this red line and the Russell 2000 which is this blue line and then plot them on a uh, y-axis and then um, see it has the same y-axis for these two but if we move to the yield curve you'll see that um, there's two different y-axis now and uh, I was able to put a, a bar in the middle and then Bitcoin uh, drastically different y-axis but this, uh, it became cumbersome using matplotlib. And matplotlib is not known for its interactivity. So I decided to use uh, Python, or I decided to use Plotly and Dash. So you can watch my whole Python for Finance playlist by clicking here. And then you can watch, uh, in there you'll see three videos where I create all the charts I just showed you. But now, and with a lot less lines of code, uh, I'll show you what I was able to do with Plotly um, and show you the two y axes I uh, created. But first, welcome to the 171st video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in Plotly, Dash, Matplotlib, AI, Python, etc. And so um, in today's video, we're going to be showing more Louisiana specific data. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because one of the chief uh, concepts I want for my AI is to be able to uh, have a comprehensive dashboard that tracks basically all the economics of Louisiana, especially where I live. And that way it can help me make informed decisions using real-time data. So um, now let's go and check out what this looks like. So we're going to run this chart. And um, a lot less lines of code, a lot less cumbersome. And when I'm ready to put this into uh, a dash, um, dash dashboard, um, the interactivity will be much more easier and it would be a uh, ready-to-go HTML website if I wanted to publish it using like Heroku and I can access it anywhere. And so let me move my face real quick to the center or to right here. So what we're looking at is a nice plotly chart that is tracking the gross national product of the state and I've done this in a previous video where we just made a simple chart and you can uh, watch that here. And so what we have is our, we actually recreated a Federal Reserve chart using the gross national product. And so what we have here is um, about 260,000 millions, right? So 260 billion is Louisiana's um, gross national product. And as you can see, um, it goes up here, it's I have a custom date range too and then the unemployment rate for the um, state. So as you can see we in 2019 we hit an all time low of 4.3 which is now on this y axis, this unemployment rate percentage. And then at an all time high in 2005 11.4 which I believe corresponds to when Louisiana had um, difficulties with the shale oil departure. Alright, so that's what the chart looks like. So what we're going to do is import pandas as PD. Um, we're going to use a go scatter graph. So we're going to import plotly.graph underscore objects as go for graph objects, go. And then from plotly.subplots import make underscore subplots. And the reason why we have to do subplots, which I haven't done in any videos, is because Plotly does not support um, multiple y-axis on a single figure, right? So to make, and I'm in the documentation now, 
to make such a figure, we'll have to use the make subplots. Alright, so that's what we're doing now. So first we're going to create a data frame. So data frame equals pd.readexcel. I have it in my downloads folder and this is the gross national product or um yeah the gross here we go gross domestic product of um, Louisiana from 1997 to 2020 all right and so next one is data frame 1 equals pd for pandas dot read excel and then that is the unemployment rate and this goes much farther back into 1976 and so um, I'll show you in a second and it's monthly all the way down to December 1st 2021 so what we did was I created a custom date range and so we can normalize that data which I will show you next uh, next we skip rows equals 10 I shouldn't have closed that but this uh, St. Louis Federal Reserve graphs basically has 10 rows of data I don't want to read into my data frame. So it starts on the 11th row. This isn't indexing, so you can just count them. So 10 rows. All their reports are like that. Next, we're going to create just a normal figure. So figure or FIG equals make underscore subplots. And we're going to pass it some specifications. So specs equals secondary underscore y equals true so we're telling it that there will be a secondary y axis then we're going to add two traces so the first trace so fig dot add underscore trace we're going to pass it the go dot scatter and unlike other um plotly that you've seen before where you pass in the whole frame um you don't do that here so you just need the x and y coordinates so the x equals data frame, which is up here. Um, observation date, which is the x. And then the y axis, which is the actual um, you know, gross domestic product. And then I put it as GNP. I guess it makes more sense to put D for gross domestic product. All right, that's the name of it. And you can see that in the legend. I'll show it again. And this is going to be the primary y. So secondary y equals false. All right. Then the next one is we're going to add the second trace. So go dot scatter. And this time the x is data frame 1. Right, data frame 1. Also the observation date. So luckily these uh, St. Louis Federal Reserve charts have the same columns names. But if not, you just change this. The y axis this time is data frame 1 and then the unemployment rate so make sure you get the um, column names exactly or run into errors so um, observation date just copy and paste it right so just go in here it's not letting me and copy and paste that same with this make sure it's capitalized um, any underscores etc make sure you pass it explicitly like that then the name is unemployment rate and this time we're going to say that the secondary is true. Okay, next we're going to update the layout to make it look like how we want. So I want the title underscore text to be this Louisiana gross domestic product. Domestic product versus the unemployment rate. And then like I said, I created a custom data range. That way it uh, normalizes the two charts. If not, then the um, blue gross domestic product line would st start halfway in the middle of the chart and then stop and it would look weird. So the x axis range, so x axis underscore range, and then you have to pass both of these. You can't just pass a beginning or an end. So it's looking for a tuple basically. Then I want the x axis title, so uh, fig.update x axis. So this is updating the, dating the layout of the graph. This is updating just the x-axis, and I just called it date. And then the y-axis, so fig.update underscore y-axis. So, um, you know, I could pass this all in one, but I need it to be separate. So this should be gross domestic product in millions. And then the secondary is false. 
And then the update y axis, title text equals unemployment rate percentage, secondary y equals true, and then fig.show, which is how you show your chart. So let's run that again. And then go through each element now that you can see it. So we called this blue one GDP now. We called the red one unemployment rate. These are default colors. We did not change the colors here. Um, if anybody is a chartologist, you know that red is uh, in America symbolic of bad. So maybe it would behoove me to change this color. Um, and just so you know, I was stationed in Korea and red doesn't mean bad over there. So um, maybe this will fly if I was in Korea still. Okay, then we have these titles right here. This title, Louisiana Gross Domestic Product versus the Unemployment Rate. We have the y axis that we updated to Gross Domestic Product in Millions. Same thing with this, Unemployment Rate Percentage. Uh, we did not mess with these, but you can, if you wanted to, adjust, set the x axis range, or the y axis ranges as well, if you wanted to. And then this is just called Date. And see how it starts in 1997 and ends in 2020 because we set the custom data range. So this is just another chart in my toolbox of my comprehensive Louisiana dashboard. You can use this for any data. It doesn't have to be Louisiana. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching me build these graphs and eventually my comprehensive data dashboard that my AI named Shane will be using. And please like this video and leave a comment if you're working on something. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.